In Japan, Toyo Shibata was old and lonely, so her son told her to try her hand at poetry. Her first collection, Don't Lose Heart, was published when she was 98 years old. It sold 1.6 million copies. One of those early poems is entitled, The Answer. The wind in my ear said, it's time now for the next world. Let's go, what do you say? In a soothing voice like a stroking cat. So I answered quickly, I will stay here a little longer. I have things left to do. The wind with a troubled face stopped and went home. On Yom Kippur, we contemplate the merits of our lifetime. We confront our own mortality. We visit the dead in sacred memory. We pray that we will be written and sealed into the Book of Life for another year of this God-given life. And like the 98-year-old poet of wisdom, we reaffirm our commitment to this world for as long as God will grant us a place in it. We answer quickly, we'll stay here a little longer. We have things left to do. Yes, there are many more mitzvot left for us to do in our lifetime. May it be God's will that we be gifted more years, more days, more breath to be worthy of having been born into life created in the divine image. And at this hour of Yiskor, we turn then from thoughts of the self, away from the content and character of our own lives, and we turn towards the content and character of the lives of those we loved and lost. Their life works are complete now. They can rest because their job is done. Their mitzvot have been fulfilled, but their impact in this world continues so long as we remember them. Among the many dear ones we remember this day is Morenu Harav, our rabbi, our teacher, Dov Marmer. Alav HaShalom. Many of you knew him well. Many of you called him your primary teacher of Torah, and he shaped you by the wisdom he gave from this bima. Some of you were his leadership partners. Some of you only knew him through his books and his articles. And some of you have joined the temple more recently and only know his name. When Holy Blossom was still looking for a rabbi to successfully succeed Rabbi Plout of blessed memory, Rabbi Marmer was headhunted and courted in 1983. He was brought from London, England to serve as Holy Blossom Temple's senior rabbi for 17 years. Towards the end of his tenure, Rabbi Marmer and then Temple President Morris Cooper interviewed me in anticipation of my ordination from Hebrew Union College and they invited me to come to Toronto. That was 24 years ago. I came to learn from the best. I came to learn from Rabbi Marmer. There are five kinds of Kaddish in our liturgical tradition. One of them is dedicated specifically for remembering our teachers, our rabbis, our role models. Kaddish de Rabbanan, the rabbi's Kaddish, it honors the Shalshelet Hadorot, the chain of generations of teachers and students, which is, in Jewish life, another kind of lineage. Not the chain of parents to children, but the lineage of mentors and counselors, guardians and guides, who help to shape the next generation by making us who we are. Who comes to mind for you today? Have you been blessed by people who encouraged you along the way? People who believed in you? 
people who help to carve out a path for you to walk through this world. We call them into our prayers as well. And I'll recite this unique paragraph from the Kaddish de Rabbanan. Al Yisrael va'al Rabbanan va'al Talmidei Hon, va'al kol Talmidei Talmidei Hon, va'al kol man da'askin ba'oraita, di va'atra hadein, v'di v'chol atar va'atar. Grant lasting peace to the people of Israel, its teachers and its students, and to all who engage in the study of Torah in this land and in all other lands. Let there be grace and kindness, compassion and love for our teachers and for us all. Grant us fulfillment of life and sustenance, and save us from all danger and distress. Amen. I wonder why does this Kaddish de Rabbanan for teachers and mentors end with end the prayer for protection from danger? Why does it end with a call for protection from distress and harm? Is it because we are vulnerable and exposed without their protection? Is it because we are susceptible to missteps and mistakes without them to guide us? Is it because of the weight of the responsibility that now rests on our shoulders as we carry forward and lead and innovate and discover as best we can without them. After his retirement in the year 2000, Rabbi and Freja Marmer made Aliyah, and they would divide their time between Toronto and Jerusalem. I went to visit with them in their home in Jerusalem this July. Rabbi Marmer was in good spirits and in good health, I didn't think it would be our last real visit. A few days later, he had a fall and everything changed. I went to visit him in the hospital and to read Psalms at his bedside. I gave a eulogy at his funeral. I laid a stone by his grave in the hills of Yerushalayim. I brought food to his family as they sat Shiva for him. But it wasn't really until I returned to Toronto that I was able to reflect on this loss personally. I came home to Holy Blossom Temple to see Rabbi Marmer's black and white portrait on the wall outside my office. And I reread some of the books that came from his library to mine, his distinctive handwriting in the margins, the occasional exclamation point, and when I teach Torah here, I teach at his Shabbat morning study table. And when I sit on this bima, I sit in his seat. And when I stand before you now, before you, his congregation, I stand where he stood. It only recently occurs to me that after my own father and grandfather, Rabbi Marmer was the rabbi who most influenced me. His intellectual rigor was self-taught and self-propelled. He set high standards for himself, for his congregation, for his lay leadership, and yes, for the Jewish professionals who served the congregation with him. Rabbi Marmer showed respect for this congregation by challenging all of us to stretch and to grow in sacred learning, in sincere prayer, and in sacred deeds. Thanks to a gift from Sandra and Joe Rotman, Alav HaShalom, Rabbi Marmer was able to publish a collection of his Yisker sermons from over the many years. And we still bring copies of this book entitled Choose Life as a gift for congregants who are in mourning. I'd like to share an excerpt of the chapter Rabbi Marmer writes about the power of Kaddish. The finest way to honor a teacher is to teach his teachings. I hope you will take comfort now in hearing his wisdom once more. Kaddish is the idiom that gives expression to belief. It says nothing about death, but much about God. It has come to speak to and for people in grief in ways that defy description. 
Even those who like to style themselves as atheists or agnostics recite Kaddish with fervor, even sincerity. I never cease to be surprised how genuinely respectful men and women are of religion in the face of death, and how anxious Jews are to recite the Kaddish in memory of those whom they mourn. I do not think they do it because they are afraid of death, or because they hope that the recitation will somehow ward off the evil. They do it, I surmise, because belief is the only alternative to despair. And despair is unbearable, even for non-believers. Jews say Kaddish because being conscious of the death of someone near and dear makes even the most skeptical among us aware that there is more to human existence than can be fathomed by the mind or contained in an ideology or expressed in psychological terms. This is not primitive superstition, but a manifestation of sophistication, an intimation of that dimension of human existence which neither the naked eye nor the clear mind can discern. Even those who have not sorted out their views about God and the meaning of Judaism can be comforted by the prospect that their lives, that the lives they mourn have not been futile. And they can also dare hope that theirs isn't either. Even though I may find it impossible to see myself as an individual living on forever, I can still see myself as having been part of the process of eternity. My life has not been meaningless after all, and ultimately, only God knows its secrets. May God remember the soul of our beloved teacher, Rabbi Dov Marmer, who has gone on to his everlasting home and who dwells beneath the shelter of the Most High. Let our learning, our prayers, and our deeds be a living memorial to him. May we pass on the wisdom he taught us. May we strive to live by it each day. May the Torah he taught bind us together and draw us closer to the God to whom he devoted himself every day of his life. Together we say, Amen. Rabbi Marmer has no primary mourners here at Holy Blossom. No, nor in Toronto. We, his congregants, his students, his leadership partners and his friends, we are his mourners here. As we turn to remember our own loved ones who have gone from this earth, let us take Rabbi Marmer Shem Tov into our hearts with our own. Zichrono Livracha, may his memory forever be for blessing.